Hey guys, it's Wave618. It's the 8th of April 2019 and we're approaching 9pm BST. So in today's video what we're going to cover is Bitcoin as well as look at Ethereum also just to get a bit of correlation and determine where price is going to go next. So depicted here you can see my long term wave count which is this, which is this major WXY that played out. And obviously the big question on everyone's mind right now is, is this 3100 the bottom? Is this price action corrective or is it the start of an impulse? So that's what we're really going to break down. You can see I've left my default corrective count here. Uh, and I'll explain the reason for that during this video. And as I say, we're also going to discuss Ethereum on top of that. So if, you, if that sounds interesting, then stay tuned. Alright guys, so let's dig right in. So uh, as I said, long term count, for those of you that aren't familiar with my channel, uh, this is a uh, W, it was three waves down, and then X wave was our descending triangle, that's A, B, C, D, E, and then we've had another three waves down to make the Y wave, so that's first wave, second wave, third wave. So that's the WXY, and the question on everyone's mind is really, is that the end of our corrective sequence, meaning that this is the low uh, before we see all-time highs, or alternatively, are we gonna see some corrective price action and price come down further to make two further waves, making this a W, X, Y, X, Z. So that's what we're gonna discuss in this video. And, um, so first of all, I've left this dotted line on the chart going across here, and this was essentially marking out this order block, so the top of the order block. So it's at 4979, and you can see we, got, we actually got, uh, we're on the weekly chart, and you can see we got a weekly close above that line, which is uh, a relatively bullish um, sign, getting a weekly close above this level. Uh, but that said, there's not been any dramatic price action, we've not really seen any dramatic uh, takeoff in price, having hit that. Um, so yeah, also let's just stick a bit of volume on the chart. So as you can see, zooming out, this is our 2014 uh, Mt. Gox high here. And you can see relatively, we haven't had that major volume coming in, in here on Bitcoin. And I did discuss in my last few videos that volume on these crypto exchanges may be misleading because obviously the reason we want to look at volume is to see where the institutions are getting in. And uh, the thing is institutions have multiple ways of hiding their volume in the sense that they can mine their own uh, altcoins and alternatively they can buy the, um, uh, the altcoins directly from the miners. So it doesn't have to go through an exchange. Um, that said, if we will we'll look at uh, Ethereum shortly and you'll see that there is a, a hell of a lot more volume coming at, uh, on the low for Ethereum. So, but we'll come to that shortly. Uh, but yeah, just take volume off for a moment just to clean it up. So basically, let's uh, look at this wave count and we'll need to zoom in for that. Let's at least go on the daily and I think the four hourly is probably ideal. Okay, so you can see my corrective uh, wave count here. And I think I mentioned it in my last video that I've got this is wave W and then this looked to me like an ascending triangle um, with this being, so let's just label it. So if we label the triangle, this is A. Let's take off magnet mode. Wave B and C, D, E. Okay, so we've got our relatively flat top. Okay, they're not all hitting the same point, but it's not a textbook. This is not the textbook, this is real life. So uh, you're, not, you're not gonna have all the points hitting the line perfectly. So you've got your top of the triangle there, and then you've got your, your higher lows coming in here. And these all these waves look corrective to me. It's converging price action. It's on falling volume, if we bring on volume. On the daily, it's a lot more clear that you can see the volume is coming down. So here's, you know, high volume. Since then, we get low, low declining volume. 
until you get your breakout volume at the end and you know price goes up from here so these are the reasons that I was thinking it's looking like a triangle and obviously there's a very good argument that if you get a triangle here it's more likely to be corrective because if it were to be impulsive and if this was a wave one then a wave two triangle is very very uncommon and so it's more likely to be part of a corrective sequence and the only argument around that from the bullish scenario for me is that if this is a wave one and you're calling this the end of wave two um, and the thing I don't like about this especially on this uh, exchange uh, bit stamp which is the chart that I'm using it, okay let's take this off a moment this move up was actually seven waves so we've got one two three four five six seven okay which looks very very corrective in my opinion now someone did mention that I think on Kraken um, this this point was lower than this point meaning that you would call this the low and then as a result this is one two three four five waves up and and so you could argue that it's impulsive but as I say we've seen declining volume throughout this price action so for me uh, if this was an impulsive wave one and then this was wave two then if you're going to call this a wave three you'd expect some you know high volume coming in which we we, we didn't really see as I sh just showed you we've got declining volume throughout the pattern so I would much rather call this a uh, a triangle as I just labeled it and then you can see if we uh, if we call that then that would be W X wave would finish here which was the end of the triangle and this would be our Y so if we just put on our fibs now so that's our W and then you extend Y from where X finishes which is here and you can see we're just about hitting the, the 1.382 which is a common Fibonacci relationship uh, in these corrective sequences as soon as you go beyond the realms of the 1.618 then you have to start thinking is it more of an impulsive type um, play but th that said it can still be corrective I have even in fact seen the wave Y be a 2.618 extension of wave W and it's still been corrective uh, but obviously this, this is a game of probabilities and when when you do see price you know the third wave being uh, beyond 1.618 extension of wave W you should really in terms of probabilities you should be thinking a bit more along the lines of it being impulsive rather than corrective okay um, so yeah that was the reason for that and of course you can see this uh, let's just delete that so you can see this pitchfork that I've got here and price action has really just been testing this pitchfork so we've uh, kind of breached it here and then we saw a nice sharp uh, move down and again we've tested it again and see a nice sharp move down you see these long wicks on the daily charts you know whenever we um, test this medium line on top of that if we just change that because obviously when it's corrective price action this is an original pitchfork with a corrective price action you generally look at the shift pitchfork and if we look at that again you can see we've not had any major break of this upper medium line which seems to be acting as resistance you can argue we are slightly above it at the moment but again this is a major level that needs to break and just looking at volume at price or volume profiles if we go on the dailies which we are and then we zoom out a little bit bring up our volume profiles you can see here let's just take out a bit, a bit of this volume from the lower part of the chart which we don't need so you can see here at this point go look look to the right hand side we're at very low volume levels here okay so these are the lowest levels there, there's only you have to go down to 3000 to see lower volume levels or to the upside you have to go all the way to 12,000 to see lower volume levels now what are low volume levels basically it means that price spends very little time at these levels um, of course volume means the number of transactions but it, it, it's also when you're looking along the y-axis the more time price spends at a certain price level the more transactions they're generally going to be so you can see here price spent ages at this price level 
And as a result, you've got this big volume spike here. Okay. Now what happens at these low volume levels, it basically means price does not spend much time at this level. Okay, it's very unlikely price is going to go sideways for a long time at this level. It's more likely to go either bounce off it or it's going to shoot through it. Those are the two options. So what else? So basically it's marking out support and resistance. Yeah, so it's either a support or resistance level. It's a very key horizontal level. Um, so, so far we've kind of had a, a bit of a, let's zoom in here. So a little bit of a double top off this, you know, um, 5,400 level where it's acting as uh, resistance so far. Now, during the week, obviously, uh, Monday is a, a little bit ambiguous in terms of the price action. Obviously, today is a Monday. And so what happens throughout the rest of the week is going to be key. And obviously, based on my count, I'm expecting price to come down. And really, we need to see how price reacts to this 4979 level, which I said is very key, uh, a very key um, level to break. So uh, my bias is that this is going to come down from here. Um, <clears throat> yeah, based on the fact that we've not broken 5400 yet. Uh, there's a corrective count here that clearly shows that we've got a WXY with good Fibonacci relationships. We've got our um, corrective pitchfork here offering good uh, resistance. Uh, so these are the reasons so far. So I've got no reason to think that this is not uh, finished. And certainly we could see a lower low than 3100. So that's my bias at the moment. However, should price go up from here, as I say, 5400 is a low volume node. And so if we break above that level, let's stay on the daily. Um, if we break above 5400, then that low volume node, that significant uh, resistance level will have been taken out and then can act as support for price to go higher and often will get attracted to this high volume node at around 6200, 6300, 6400. Um, so we're at a very key level. As I say, I'm leaning bearish. Uh, leaning, I'm leaning to the you know, leaning bearish at present. But if price goes a little bit higher, I can easily change my opinion and want to see price go higher, perhaps to around the 6200 mark. Okay. Um, so that's my uh, preferred count on Bitcoin so far. And um, as I mentioned, we're gonna have a look at Ethereum as well. So let's just pull up the chart. Okay, so on Twitter, you will have noticed that I did post about us potentially having an ascending triangle with this being a wave one and then a wave two triangle, which as you know, is uncommon However, it was looking, until we moved a little bit higher, it was looking rather triangular-ish. I was expecting another move down before a break to the upside. So if this was our initial impulse up, we then could label a potential triangle as A, B, C, D, E, and then a break to the upside. However, price, Let's just take that off for now. You can see price made these higher highs. It wasn't really respecting the this resistance level of the triangle. It just continued higher. And I noticed it was looking very, very wedge-like. And when you see a wedge, you should think two things. Is it a impulsive diagonal or alternatively a corrective WXYZ? So I've labeled it here as an impulsive diagonal, but you can argue you would have to look at the subwave count. You can argue that it could be a W, X, Y, X, Z. So a corrective sequence, and then we're gonna see a, a move down to make lower lows. Now the thing is with, let's delete this. Thing is with Ethereum, as I said, at the low, you got a lot of volume coming in. Let's just put some volume on here. So as opposed to Bitcoin, 
you can see a tremendous amount of volume came in at the bottom here. And so you can argue that price is going to have difficulty breaking these lows, in which case you may want to suggest that this is impulsive, so it could be a leading diagonal. Um, typically in a leading diagonal you'll get a 53535 five, wave count and it is a little bit messy. Um, you can, I think you probably can call it a 53535 wave count. Um, so yeah, at the moment, I'm, but either way, I am expecting a pullback at this point. Now this is a major resistance level and I'll show you, I'll bring up the volume profiles, but supposing this was a leading diagonal, you'd expect a correction, you know, a wave two, if it's a major wave one, you expect a major wave two correction um, and the other thing obviously with Ethereum is that we broke this major pitchfork. This was a huge pitchfork, pitchfork. Price action followed it for one year, really respecting the, you know, the boundaries of the pitchfork. So you can see we drew our th first um, three pivots based on our first two waves, the W and the X. And then price tests the lower median line, the upper warning line, ranges between the upper warning line and the upper median line, tests the median line twice, and then lower median line, and then we get a break of the warning line here, retest, move higher. Um, so for me, this was a very bullish signal combined with the high volume here. And so my preferred count with Ethereum would be an impulsive count which is this one two three four five as opposed to a wxyxz um obviously if price we'll have to see how if price does come down here we'll look at the you know the nature of the price action whether it's looking impulsive or corrective uh in its movement and that might change my mind about whether we're going to see lower lows or not but at present uh, and, and big uh, ethereum has traced retraced 94 percent let's not forget that either so it's retraced a lot more than Bitcoin, which retraced about, you know, I think around 80% from its all time highs. Ethereum has done a lot of retracing and now it's starting to form a bit of a curved out bottom. So um, yeah, there is a chance that Bitcoin could potentially make new lows whilst Ethereum might not. Um, that's the way I'm kind of looking at it at present. This is my preferred count. Obviously, if we go above here, then, as I say, this is a major resistance level, and I'll have to change my wave count if we do go higher than here. Um, so it would get invalidated if we start making newer highs at this point. Uh, and just to show you the significance of this level, looking at volume profiles, let's include a bit more data on the chart. So we're at this is the level that we're at at present. You can see low volume here. And if you scroll across, you can see it's acted as support several times at this level. And now it's acting as resistance. So a very key level. So these are my preferred counts at the moment. Either way, both Bitcoin and Ethereum, for me, we're looking at a, you know, a temporary, at least temporary move down. On Ethereum, as I say, I'm not too sure we'll see new lows. We'll have to see what the price action shows. But on Bitcoin, it's looking like we may actually see new lows. Um, but yeah, the, the or I'll be able to update you once we get new price action coming in, whether we're likely to see that play out. But at present, that would have to be how I'm looking at things. So uh, I hope that makes it a bit clearer. It's been a couple of days since my last few videos. I'm hoping to do them a bit more frequently. So yeah, if you're liking the content, let me know. Uh, leave a like if you appreciate um, what I'm providing here. And uh, yeah, any, any queries, any comments, just put it in down below. And um, yeah, I think we'll wrap it up there, guys. All right, take care.